One thing I always said is it's actually not that bad for tone indicators to exist in text. It's not like you have to use them. And people already use tone indicators in the form of emojis and emotes. It's a good way to communicate because man is a social animal. I'm saying it. Jordan Peterson, which I will be covering right now, ironically does a very similar thing. Jordan Peterson used to always talk about cultural Marxism, cultural Marxism uh, and the Frankfurt School and how cultural Marxism has taken over colleges and is rotting Western civilization to its core. Now, the original term for that was cultural Bolshevism used by Nazis. Anytime you hear somebody talk about cultural Marxism, understand that they're actually just repeating the same exact fascist tropes all the way from uh, all the way from Nazi Germany about Judeo-Bolshevism, cultural Bolshevism, and what uh, Jewish people that uh, were, were doing to erode the foundations of Western civilization built by superior races. You're just talking about a repackaging of precisely that. You can't just say cultural Bolshevism anymore because people go, wait a minute, that's what fucking Nazis said. What are you talking about? So you say cultural Marxism. Well, let's hear what he has for uh, motivating Gen Z. You're going to love this. I recently sat down with world-renowned psychologist and author Dr. Jordan Peterson. We talked about a number of things, including education versus indoctrination and his mission to fight the far-left woke agenda in schools, maybe your school as well as why Gen Z's can't cut it in the workforce. Not all of you, but some of you, and how we can help them. You got a new study showing new 2023 hires are unprepared for work, they're unprepared for life. Dr. Peterson's take on all of this, especially for parents, is fascinating. Watch. When this study popped up, we thought, you got to weigh in on this. They say that Gen Z's come in, they're sincere, but if they have no necessary instinct on what to do next, find them a lot sitting idly by waiting for instructions on what to do next. Does that make sense to you? Something about this generation that would have trouble being self-motivated. Well, I think that if you set up an education system that's designed to do nothing but demoralize young people. It's odd to do, like it's odd to address Gen Z when you are absolutely absolutely tailoring this messaging and your broadcast to your true audience, which is boomers, their grandparents. This video is not cut for Gen Z. Not a single Gen Z I will see this video, especially on television, maybe on YouTube, on accident, but certainly not on TV, okay? The idea that a single Gen Z I will see this is fucking laughable, which is the kind of attitude that I want you to have while you're watching this because it's probably going to be tailored towards not necessarily Gen Z, but their grandparents. Like I tailored the next three minutes at the top of the hour to those who are subscribed, okay? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And those who are unsubscribed, Gen Z or not, will not see the broadcast. They will actually exclusively see the ads, three minutes of them to be exact. Now, if you no longer want to see those ads, if you want to be a part of the people that uh, is in the in-group of those who no longer see the ads and hear my commentary instead, then all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break. Now, Gen Z soft skills struggle. Make change of the register. Work with others. Make eye contact. Deal with frustration. Stay off their phones. Take initiative. This is basically <laughs> all... What was it? All, all millennials uh, know how to be bisexual, eat hot chip, and lie. Charge they phone. That's so funny. <laughs> My parents won't get the fuck off their phones. Yeah. Meanwhile, grandpa definitely knows how to deal with frustration. And like, while he might not be on his phone, grandpa's watching Fox News for 12 hours a day. What the fuck do you mean? Does grandpa know how to work with others? Does grandpa deal with frustration well? So dumb. And to convince them that their ambition is dangerous and 
well, even world-threatening for that matter, a manifestation of patriarchal oppression on the social front and then a danger to the survival of the planet on the natural front, then, and you don't do anything to foster that ambition and to channel it into a manner that might be productive and to tell young people why their ambition might be useful, then you're going to get exactly that. So you hit what you aim at if you try hard enough and the education system has been trying to demoralize people for 60 years. One of the, one of the things that really stuns me, you know, I haven't been able to figure this out yet, I've been trying to talk to Republican governors about this. I cannot understand why conservatives have been daft enough to allow the faculties of, edu of education to retain their hammerlock on teacher certification for the last 60 years. It's insane. You right? mean the criteria to get the certification and what's exactly. in it? You have to be trained in a faculty of education to become a teacher. Why? They're the most woke element of the entire rotten university carcass. And they have the hammerlock on 50% of the state budgets. You know, the conservatives are always complaining about the culture war. It's like, well, you handed all the young people to the faculties of education, right? Their research is terrible. It's low rate. Their students are generally uh, very uh, incompetent, comparatively speaking, on the academic front, you know. It's foolish, and, and this is the outcome. It's not surprising. And it's a way to, to work on the foundation. And when you have an art, Is he crazy? Is he suggesting that we just like, like just defund them, these godforsaken institutions, just defund them. They're churning out, they're churning out propaganda. RNC chair or DNC chair, if you have an agenda, that's what to work on. Don't get Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, candidate elected. Start focusing on, on the direction you want the country in and find out how to, um, how to give people an education that will allow them to at the very least think, but not what to think. Well, the left-wingers in the 1960s were far-seeing enough, the more radical types, to envision a decades-long march through the institutions, right? And one of their goals was the capture of educational institutions, and that's happened completely. And that's been absolutely abetted by conservatives who tend to get lost in the details. And, right. um, well, then you think now you have young people who are demoralized and directionless. Well, they're never taught anything about how to acquire a direction. You know, we did a study I used this program I developed called Future Authoring. We did a study where we had three studies, actually, where we had university students sit down essentially for 90 minutes. Right. 90 minutes, this was it, and write out a goal, a series of goals for their life, right? Who could they be in five years across seven important dimensions of their life? And where might they be that would be terrible if they didn't get their act together? We dropped their dropout rate 50% and raised their grade point average 30 by 35%, three separate studies. So that's all you have to do if you want to motivate young people is to teach them a bit of visionary discipline and encourage it. And we do the opposite of that. Plus, we terrify them, trigger warnings. We tell them that everything's dangerous. Yeah, dude, that's the... <laughs> yeah, that's what's stopping uh, children from learning, you know? Trigger warnings and stuff. That's what's terrifying children in schools is, is fucking trigger warnings. My man is perma stuck in 2016 so hard, dude. This is such a fucking 2014 to 2016 era. Absolute idiotic, dumbass fucking take. I thought we, we killed this. I thought this was dead. I thought this was not a thing that people were, were saying. Like, who the fuck still complains about trigger warnings? Who? Actually, who? Is there anyone that's still like, yeah, trigger warnings? Like, it was a fixture of the permanently online when it was popping. It's completely uh, silly. Like, is that even a thing still? You talked about accommodation. So someone has uh, ADD, they're told. They're, yeah. Uh, dyslexia or other things. Yeah. In the public school now, there's a lot of accommodations. Give me, give me, I'm going to give you more time for your test. Yeah. Or things to that nature. I have trouble tracking across the line. He complains about uh, standards and guidelines. Very much so at colleges. Okay. It is being utilized in certain institutes of learning. Okay. But does that mean that there's like any kind of discourse surrounding it where people are like, oh, you gave a trigger warning for this? This is fucked up. Like, are people even mad about it is my point.
is there still discourse over it? You know what I mean? This isn't being a petty bitch for his licensure being threatened for being a dumbass. Yeah, I mean, he was posting about how it was hard for him to find child porn on Twitter. No wonder uh, they they threatened to, to remove his license. Yeah. Don't throw haws. That's a real tweet that he posted. Was there ever a, actually anyone who expected trigger warnings IRL? I mean, they will do it in like a college or something in an educational setting. Sometimes they issue it before like, uh, maybe not a movie, but like a YouTube video or something. Or uh, a news broadcast, like trigger warning uh, images and depictions of police brutality. But not a single fucking person would complain about it now because like, people understand. Ultimately, it's like, ultimately, you know why? People understand it because it's accommodating, okay? And at the end of the day, this entire project of humanity revolves around us as social animals coexisting, cohabitating the same fucking spaces. And in order for that project to work, you have to be respectful. You have to be kind. You have to be accommodating. And as long as those uh, accommodations are not like insane, right? Like changing people's uh, behavior or making it much harder to exist or coexist, then yes, there are always people that are going to get mad. Uh, or or people that even take those accommodations overboard to the other degree, right? To the other side. But you just basically pick and choose things that work and move along with it. One thing that I said a long time ago, when tone indicators were being utilized online, one thing I always said is, it's actually not that bad for tone indicators to exist in text. Because it is absolutely, it's not, it's not like you have to use them, right? And people already use tone indicators in the form of emojis and emotes. But tone indicators isn't just for people with autism. It's just for everybody, really. It's a good way to communicate because man is a social animal. Now, you can fucking lose your mind over it and get mad about it and be like, how are these people communicating? It's so much worse now. Back in the day... I could just send an eggplant emoji and everyone would understand that that is my dick. It's a substitute for my penis. Now, I'm getting in trouble for it. Why? Because I did not use a tone indicator. I know the grand jury in Georgia is voting. We are, do not worry, we're watching. It's pack watch time, okay? Huh. You pick and choose things that work. And the things that don't work, the things that are otherwise seen as silly, like Latinx, are slowly but surely shelved, okay? Or relegated to the, the sacred halls of academia in certain circumstances. That's it. Birthing person. You will never in a million years see someone drop that in public. When describing a fucking human being, okay? It's just never happening. That is never going to happen. I go to the wokest fucking circles, okay? Trust me. The only time I've heard people talk about birthing person one way or another is always right-wing reactionaries getting mad about a problem that does not exist, okay? Maybe in a medical context. That's it. It is so fucking dumb to get upset about it okay understand it's just like this is most conservative commentary vice signaling about certain accommodations made that are not even nonsensical but at worst just have no harm conducted to another person maybe annoys you a little bit when you see it that's it. All they do is chirp, 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 chirp about this as though it's like eviscerating Western civilization. It is destroying Western civilization. If Western civilization is so indestructible, how the hell is it crumbling because someone used a trigger warning? You think accommodations in many cases don't show progress, can, can be limiting. Why? Well... The problem with the accommodation hypothesis is something like 
the advantage is, well, you want to do what you can to help people who might have obstacles that could be overcome to learn. That's not unreasonable. But the problem with the accommodation hypothesis is, well, what happens when you have an actual problem to solve? You're not going to be... There is nothing more hilarious than Jordan Peterson constantly chirping about accommodation because this circuit that he's complaining about has not been accommodating to his lack of accommodation narrative. Like, at a certain point, everyone is looking for a hug box. And Jordan Peterson's entire gripe revolves around the circles that he was in, in academia, not being a hug box for him. That's all his spite. That's where he, that's what motivates him. That's what drives him. Obviously, money drives him as well. Fame, you know, those sorts of things. He, he likes that. But he's just fucking mad that they won't accommodate him being against accommodation. It's always projection with these fucking weirdos, man. Freaks. Accommodated. You're not going to be accommodated in a workforce that requires genuine competition. Because if you're accommodated in a workforce that requires genuine competition, you're just going to be taken out. There's no time for that. Right. You might say, well, there should always be time. It's like... No, you fucking idiot. How can you compare education to, like, a competitive field, like MBA or something? It's idiotic. You can't leave people behind. This motherfucker literally looks at, like, George W. Bush's No Child Left Behind and goes, No, it was great when children were left behind. More children should be left behind. That's how we will actually educate a larger population. I don't think he doesn't. I don't think he doesn't really want the accommodations. Then he won't have a grift. Yeah, that's true. That there's that aspect of it too. Like, well, not if there are important things Life's at stake. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's there's gonna you. That's foolish, right? Because when you're making important decisions, you're always balancing one catastrophe against another. You don't have the option that everything's going to turn out. And so the problem with accommodation, well, first of all, it's going to be gamed, and it's being gamed like mad. And second, it gives the person who's being accommodated to the wrong picture of the world to which they're going to adapt. You think about this with parenthood. How should you treat your kids? Well, as a mother and father, you... Here's why I can never take this seriously, because the world is not a meritocracy, no matter how hard this fucking dingus tries to claim it is. Not a meritocracy at all. That's why people get so mad at nepotism, nepotism, nepotism. It's like, dude, listen, affluent families are able to have accommodations made for them in the form of not having to have their child work a job, for example, while they're going to school, okay? There is no real meritocracy, pure grit, because there is no real base level of material equality. Jordan Peterson used to always say, equality of outcome is not what we want. We want equality of opportunity, which we have. And now these neo-Marxist postmodernists want equality of outcome. It's like, no, dumbass. Point to me a single place in society where there has ever been equality of opportunity truly established. It does not exist. That's what people are advocating for. That's what people want. Equality of opportunity. You are just using yet another straw man to make it seem like equality of opportunity is actually just equality of outcome. It's so stupid. Bro, you nail him so well. It's because I spent so many years duking it out online with Jordan Peterson dick riders who were some of the most unimaginably annoying assholes that I literally picked up on his mannerisms and his voice and, and all of his arguments. Some of which are in here as fans of mine now, luckily, because they've changed their mentality over the course of uh, the 2014 all the way to like the 2020 era. I've been saying the truth about Jordan B. Peterson for years, almost 10 fucking years now. I mean, since he first popped off in like 2014, 2015. It's very, it's very frustrating to see uh, him still try to revitalize this exact same grift with the exact same standards, with the exact same talking points in 2023 because the cycle wore itself out only to rear its ugly head again now that Joe Biden is president and, like, you know, liberalism has taken root in society. You should be a proxy for the world, maybe a slightly more merciful proxy, but basically the message you send your kids about their behavior is the same message 
Your most popular vid on him helped me change my mind. Jordan Peterson is not a liberal. I don't give a shit how much you try to say he's a liberal. You go to a Turning Point USA conference and you speak as a conservative speaker at the Turning Point USA conference alongside uh, the likes of Tucker Carlson and numerous other people, then you're not a liberal. You're, you are literally a conservative. But uh, a lot of people are new to politics or, you know, they feel... You don't talk about it as much. Uh, you don't talk about it much, but I remember you saying every day after Biden got elected that this shit was coming back. Yeah, I did. And I was right. And it did. You look like Matt like Walsh Jordan here. Peterson yeah, my hair looks helped awful them. here. Jordan Peterson does do uh, regular self-help. Self-help is a grift overall. But okay, guys, remember, this was my worst moments, okay? This is like end of, end of 2020. Uh first half of 2021 was like when I was rapidly gaining weight and looking like absolute doo-doo. How'd you get your hair to curl more like now? Um, my hair was wavy and curly there as well. It's just that when you don't wash yourself... When you don't wash your hair for a while, it tends to be a little bit, I mean, it's still wavy, you can see it, but it tends to be a little bit straighter. I was a real gamer back then. Ah, uh, anyway. Where were we? Where's Jordan Peterson? Where's Jordan? Let's hear. ...that the world is going to send them. It should be. Because otherwise you're not preparing them for the world. You know, so maybe your kid's annoying as hell to you and your wife, and you don't do anything about it because you think, well... Also, one thing that you looked over today is his claim about the future authoring program claims. His study is not peer-reviewed, done in only two universities, and track GP over two semesters only. Motherfucker out here making outlandish claims. Yeah. One fun thing that these conservative freaks used to do, which is like kind of a dying art at this point, is they used to always talk about how shitty the humanities are, which Jordan Peterson not going to fully do because, like, I mean, he's a psych guy. But they used to talk about how shitty the studies are in humanities. And it's not a real science, right? Liberal arts is bullshit. Look at all these fucking bullshit studies. They used to bring this shit up all the time. As a matter of fact, they even make, like, fake studies to prove how easy it was to, like, get non-peer-reviewed studies uh, published and shit, right? Um, meanwhile, they do that all the time now. I mean, that's, that's, this is him doing the same thing. It's just like a fucking bullshit-ass study. Also, it's ironic because, like, a lot of the bullshit-ass studies come from, or way more of the bullshit studies come from the oil lobbyists that create think tanks that explicitly churn out these studies with propaganda purpose that make their way, not in front of peer reviewers, but instead make their way directly to Fox News and, uh, you know, Ben Shapiro and everyone else. Uh, we're all mercy. It's like, that's just fine until your kid has to make a friend or, you know, deal with an adult that's not you, in which case they're going to get slaughtered. There's nothing merciful about that. And if you accommodate people beyond what the environment itself would allow, you, right. you misinform them about the, the world they're going to inhabit. And plus, it can be gamed, and it's being gamed constantly. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite take, which is like, again, such an old grift. You almost appreciate it. It's like nostalgic. You know what I mean? We opened up a time capsule and Jordan Peterson from 2014 popped out, crawled his fucking, crawled out of there to just like say the same shit. Like, oh yeah, if we do accommodations in schooling, then these kids are going to be shocked when they find it out in the real world. Okay? There's no accommodation in the real world. It's like, yeah, motherfucker, everybody knows that. Like, this is the dumbest, perhaps the dumbest argument that they used to use against safe spaces, Right? They were like, you can't have a safe space in a college campus because the world is not safe. It's like, hey, you fucking idiot. That is the entire point of the safe space because it comes with the recognition that nowhere else do you have like a free moment where you don't have to constantly debate your identity, for example. That's the literal point. If the entire world was safe and everybody fucking recognized it, there would be no need for a safe space.
It's so stupid. This motherfucker went into a benzo uh, addiction coma and then came back and he still thinks it's fucking 2014. What's happening? What's going on? And of course, once again, pure projection, pure grift and pure projection. I've never met a conservative that doesn't love having a safe space and a hug box. 90% of their fucking arguments revolve around why liberals don't agree with them. That's like their whole fucking argument is like, oh, well, liberals don't agree with me, which is why we need to bully them until they're forced to. Oh, I got dunked on. I hate that. That's the worst thing that could have ever happened. Let's build a conservative dating site. Surely that'll work. It's like, it's so stupid. Instantly. Online school, you and your daughter yeah. working together. Yeah. What do we know and how do we get it? Well, we've got about 30. Yeah, and there it is. And this is the real reason why he's doing this grift because he, much like Barry Weiss and all these other like intellectual conservatives are, are trying to start their own colleges, okay? Fake colleges taking advantage of, like, America's awful higher education structure that allows you to just, like, slap on the word college or university onto any kind of institution. Barry Weiss did this in Austin, if I remember correctly. What the fuck was it? She made, like, some nonprofit grift. Uh, Trump University is a very famous example of this, obviously. And now Jordan Peterson's getting in on the grift as well. 30 courses... Recorded so far in a studio in Miami. Um, they look very good. They're very professionally produced. We are trying to find the best lectures in the world. So if you think you're a good lecturer and you want to participate, give that some thought. Yeah, I love watching One Nation with Brian Kill Me. I'm the world's greatest lecturer. And wouldn't you know it, I'm watching One Nation with Brian Kill Me right now. It's my time to shine. Oh, my God. Let me ring up Jordan Peterson right now. Like, who the fuck are you recruiting at One Nation with Brian Kill Me, dude? That's Peterson Academy. We hope we'll be ready to roll in November. We want to make sure that we have the best lectures that we can possibly provide on the most germane. I mean, this is so awesome. Because uh, when Barry Wise did the same exact thing, everybody just, like, clowned on her, and then it failed. Okay? It's just a scam. You want to know how I know? Andrew Tate did it with Hustlers University, bitch. He was there before you. He did it way before you, King. What's happening? Sitting between Jordan Peterson and Brian Kill Me on a movie theater love seat, and they're both snoring asleep from Klonopin. Klon... Klon... Klon Klonopin. Yeah, I said it right. Klonopin. Did I say it right? K-pin. Fuck. <laughs> Connor. Won't catch me in Hasanabi University. I'll be leaving with new pronouns. <laughs> main topics, and then we're going to ally that with a very stringent testing and accrediting system so that if you are a graduate of this particular institution, the people who hire you will know that you learned what you were aiming at learning and that you did the proper work. And that's extraordinarily important because employers need to know that. They Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, dude, so many people are, are, so many people are going to be just desperately fighting over one another to get the latest Peterson University graduates. <laughs> they learn things like hustle culture, cryptocurrencies, and uh, numerous other subjects that all of his, this fucking goons, uh, all of this goons' closest allies will be pushing for. Matt Walsh teaches gender. <laughs> Dog, you're a Daily Wire commentator at this point. That's all you do. You're not a fucking serious uh, professor any longer. Like, you got kicked out of the profession, so you turned around, went to America, just like all of these fucking fallen dipshits do whenever like European countries or want to be European countries like Canada, snow Mexico will kick you out. And then you come to America to continue the grift. 
Steven Crowder teaches interpersonal relationships in the workplace. So I know you had a few hurdles to clear to get here. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I know our audience does. Best success uh, coming your direction. And, well, if you want to go see you in person, just go to Jordan jordanbpeterson.com. Dr. Yeah. Peterson, thanks so much. Hey, you Great bet. to see you, sir. Thanks for the invitation. All right. Pretty cool, right? Don't miss the second part of my interview with Dr. Jordan Peterson next week. Oh, hell yeah. Went to jordanbpeterson.com. My man is still selling tickets for a tour, offering personality courses, understandmyself.com, conservative manifesto, a vision for conservatives. Remember, he was a liberal, by the way. SA, you don't need another autocorrect. ARC, the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship Statement of Vision and Invitation. Where the fuck's his college? An eight-module per, module personality course taught by renowned psychologist and best-selling author. Trillion things to pay attention to. Almost all of them are irrelevant. Why are they irrelevant? It genuinely is the case that people are different. And, of course, it's difficult to get a handle on that because you tend to see the world through your own personality. This is it? This is all they got? Okay, this is more music than actual takes. 79,000 followers launching in 2023. This is this is so We're filming a course on the Sermon on the Mount, an intro to Churchill and an intro to statistics this week. So it's going to be an online college? Wait, Matt Como shot this? What the fuck? No shot. That's crazy. He was like the OG TikTok camera guy. I've known him for years, like probably for the past 10 years. He caught my, his work uh, caught my attention 10 years ago. Um, and I thought it was really good. And he, he is very talented. And uh, he he's worked with like every fucking big TikTok guy or every big Instagram Vine guy, pretty much. A recent, a recent review of University of Austin? How the so-called University of Austin is faring nearly two years after conception. What's in a name, Shakespeare once mused? It seems the minds behind this upstart took a page out of the Bard's book. With the specific city and the school's name, it would make sense to actually be located there. While University of Austin, Texas has office space for its administrative headquarters in South Austin, all classes have been taught over short sessions in Dallas so far. President of Communications Hillel Ofek says the school is keeping its options open while seeking land to develop a campus in Austin. Accreditation. Yeah, about that whole university thing, if you read its fine print carefully, you'll notice that it usually refers to itself as UATX, strategically avoiding that U word, just like Prager U. That's because you can't call yourself a university in Texas unless you are one, which it isn't. While its website says it will seek accreditation, it also implies the whole system is rigged. OFIC says UATX has submitted the necessary paperwork and is currently waiting out the process. Course offerings. On its summer programming, they have the series Forbidden Courses. For a school that emphasizes serious inquiry, it smacks of a juvenile fixation on shock value. Moreover, there's the fact that topics covered in these sessions, religion, sexuality, race, are discussed and written about extensively and from a variety of perspectives in the universities across the globe. Guys. This is shocking. Faculty. So it gets a C- minus on course offerings. It gets an F on accreditation, F on location. Faculty. The notable names associated with UATX might be a strongest selling point. However, famed Harvard professor Steven Pinker resigned from the advisory board almost immediately after its formation. Steven Pinker is also a fucking clown ass. And he's not alone. More recently, board member and evolutionary biologist Heather Hying Departed in December 2022 after suggesting that the school was simply too obsessed with being anti woke. <laughs> dude, dude, you got, you lost Jeffrey Epstein's friend, Steven Pinker, and, uh, and Heather Hine. Diversity gets a D. Plus. Although it claims to foster diversity of thought, the cast that has taught the school's courses thus far appear to be a cadre of thinkers that each hold a particular controversial view. From University of Chicago, Professor Dorian Abbott's hatred of inclusion initiatives, likening them to Nazism, 
to author Katie Rofi's insinuation that some date rapes are the victim's fault. It begins to look like less of a learning institution and more like an intellectual Ponzi scheme where the buy-in is railing against wokeism. The real thing I want to know... The real thing I want to know is, like, how many people have, like, fallen to this grift? <clears throat> Crucial step in building a university is scaring away all the smart people who might actually teach there. Yeah, because you don't want them. They're smart. That means they're gay. And we don't want that. We want, like, fucking... And by gay, I mean, I don't mean, like, actually queer. I mean, like, they're lame. You know what I mean? That's the way that they would refer to it. Like, they want diversity initiatives and stuff like that. We don't want that. They're nerds. We want non-woke professors. Um, Peterson Academy's uh, 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 Twitter account boasts uh, in its description, courses, virtual classrooms, community, devoid of ideology, learn the world's best, how to think, not what to think. Launching in 2023. And then the first thing that comes up is just promoting Michaela Peterson. Peterson Academy at Peterson Academy will fix this 900 likes. It's not doing well. His daughter is hot. Yeah, of course. I Wait, did let me hear. I want to hear what he has to say about the American education system. Got to see. What brilliant takes this Canadian man has. Derivation of the American public education system and found out that it was based on the Prussian model. And the Prussians produced a universal education system in the late 1800s because they were afraid they were losing military superiority and they wanted to produce a cadre of mindless, obedient soldiers. That was Okay, public education, much like the military structure, is almost entirely created for some level of public cohesion. Yes social cohesion that part is not true but you would agree with that i think most people would you you kind of need that you you need like here's the thing you need some level of of social cohesion to exist to cohabitate you also need like a base level of education you need like some information that is forcibly fed into you so that you can operate in society. It was expressly the purpose. And then that model was adopted by prototypical fascists in the U.S., again in the late 1800s, this is before Mussolini and all of that time, corporate types mostly who wanted to produce cadres of obedient workers. And that's why the desks are in rows, and that's why there's factory bells, and that's why it's top-down leadership. What was really stunning about that... Wait, what the fuck? What? Dude, this is like straight-up anarchism. Like, the, his, his critique of, wait, what? His critique of the American education structure is quite literally, like, this is, first of all, like, w what is he about to say? Like, schools are prisons? Like, what's happening? Th th this is insane. Th this is, isn't this Foucault? Isn't he straight up fucking biting? Foucault shit, not that he's, I mean, I'm not saying he's like anarchist or uh, whatever, but like, I'm almost certain, what? This is literally, dude, he became what he hates the most, a postmodernist. <laughs> a neo-Marxist postmodernist. What the fuck? Dude, this paired up with his his constant, like him him claiming that he wants to be devoid of ideology is that, I think he's still relapsing from the the Slavo Žižek uh, beatdown to this to this day. He's just like, what happened? Did he start reading all the works and finally start reading all the works and just like rip them, but also claim that he's doing it from like a right wing perspective? What's going on? It wasn't only that that was the model, but it's it's worse than that because the people who built the schools were consciously aiming at eradicating the will of the students who were part of the system because they wanted them to be obedient. I did some invest. I'm losing my mind. Did no one point this out? I'm sure people they saw this be. and were...
Nope. Everyone's saying wokeism is the tool. Wokeism, wokeism, wokeism. Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. People are fucking Foucault posting. But like, but like in a right wing way. What is happening? This is a Facebook memification. Here's the Foucault quote. Dude, 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 dude. I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my fucking mind. What is going on? Is it surprising that the cellular prison with its regular chronolo chronologies, forced labor, its authorities of surveillance and registration, its experts in normality who continue and multiply the functions of the judge should have become the modern instrument of penality? Is it surprising that prisons resemble factories, schools, barracks, hospitals, which all resemble prisons? What the fuck? This, this is critique being appropriated and consumed by the status quo, lol. No, it's also because, like, these people are fucking stupid. They're just incredibly stupid. This is crazy. Regimented schools do inhibit creativity and learning. I don't even disagree with that. The problem is, when you're a fucking conservative saying this, you're saying it for an entirely different purpose. Your purpose is the abolition of the education department. Your purpose is to basically only offer charter schools that are private to drive an even further wedge into those who have and those who have not, okay? You just want to destroy the federal government in its entirety. You don't like the social cohesion or some semblance of social cohesion that public institutions create, and it's supposed to create that so that we can cohabitate with ease, okay? So we can collaborate better. That's why I always say institutes of higher learning have to be fucking free because that will mean that we have a better educated, more productive labor force that is beneficial for even the capital owners, if you want to think about it from a long-term perspective. These guys don't want that. They want people to be dumber. They want people to not be educated. They want only those who are uh, wealthy enough to come from wealthy families to get these, uh, uh, these educations, to, to create an even larger wedge between uh, the, the underclass, the working class, and uh, the capital owners. Oh, God. Okay. All right. I love this Jordan Peterson shit. What is this? Hopefully student debt like this will be a thing in the past once we take off. Wait, what? When I was 17, I went to Olympus get tattoo. Went to get Olympus get tattoo and when it, they wouldn't let me because I didn't have a guardian's approval. I cried and punched a lamppost. Three months later, I was allowed to take on $119,000 in loans to go to our school. Wait, is he... Are they, how are they funding this institution? Like what? I mean, that's a banger tweet. But I, I don't get it. Anyway. Um, so Jordan Peterson is biting into Foucault's shit super hard. Kind of messed up. We will not allow it. Not on our watch. Uh, last thing I wanted to cover is Donald Trump. And then we're going to get to more fun shit.